One of the most fabulous expressions of Persian culture throughout the centuries is without a doubt its miniature art. Its first golden period was during the early 14th century after a period of destruction caused by the Mongol invasion. The later Mongol rulers, however, became assimilated to Persian culture and became important sponsors of Persian artists. It is under their patronage that the miniature art of Iran flourished for the first time. This video will briefly discuss this first golden period of Persian miniature painting. Let us go first back in time. We are in the 13th century, which was a turbulent period for Asia to say the least. It saw the sudden rise of the Mongol Empire under Genghis Khan, whose armies surprised and conquered nearly the whole of Asia, leaving behind them a trail of bloodshed and destruction. Also, Iran was not spared from this carnage. It suffered two major waves of Mongol attacks. The whole ordeal started with a series of incursions by Genghis Khan himself in the northeast of Iran. After this first wave, around 1220, came a second series of attacks under Genghis Khan's grandson, Hulegu Khan. Some 30 years later, around 1250, this invasion was far more serious and resulted in the complete Mongol conquest and occupation of Iran. Thus, the Persian world became part of the Ilkhanate, which was the southwestern sector of the Mongol Empire. This part of the Mongol Empire was nominally dependent from Kublai Khan, who ruled over Mongolia and China, but de facto it was an independent state, and would remain so for the rest of its history. The successors of Hulegu ruled over Iran with only its exploitation on their minds. They imposed burdensome taxes on the population and no attempt was made to properly govern the country. Subsequently, by the end of the 13th century, the economy of Iran was on the verge of collapsing. That was until, in 1295, Ghazan Khan ascended the throne. He was the first Ilkhanate ruler who converted to Islam and he was a great admirer of Persian civilization. He wished to govern the country properly, hoping to revitalize its economy and also to further develop Persian culture. Ghazan succeeded in doing so and Iran became strong again economically at the beginning of the 14th century. Now this prosperity opened up funds which could be spent on beautiful luxurious products created by the most talented artists of Iran. For example, high on the wishing list now of the Khan, his court and the noblemen of the Persian world were illuminated manuscripts created by the most talented calligraphers and further adorned by the most gifted miniature painters of Iran. An important early manuscript which shows the formative stages of the Ilkhanid imperial style was the Manafi al-Hayawan. This was a bestiary created by Ibn Bakhtishu. In these miniature paintings, we clearly see three sources of influence which were essential to the formation of the Ilkhanid Persian style. In this piece, for example, we can clearly see Chinese influence in the way in which the tree was painted. And then there is the golden belly of the horse, which according to specialist Sheila Canby comes from the Arabic tradition of miniature painting. And then I wish to guide your attention towards the dotted skin of the horse, which clearly shows influence from Persian ceramics. So in short, there are three influences, Chinese, Arabic and Persian. Now another important group of early illuminated manuscripts from the Ilkhanid miniature tradition are a series of three small illustrated Shahnameh's. Now the Shahnameh, as most of you know, was the national epic poem of Iran written by Ferdowsi around the year 1000 of the Common Era. 
Now the small size suggests that its commissioner was not the Khan himself, but the lavish use of gold as we can see here still suggests a rich patron who was probably attached to the court of the Khan. Now these manuscripts are especially culturally significant because they are the first illustrated manuscripts of the Shahnameh. Now the fact that there are so many illustrations within these manuscripts suggests that its commissioner was not well acquainted with the Shahnameh and needed visual aid to understand the story. In any case, there is a clear Mongol background to these manuscripts due to the fact that there is a lot of emphasis on action and violence, preferred subjects of the Mongol aristocracy of the Ilkhanate. Also distinctive Mongol is the attire of the warrior shown here, with his helmet with round ear flaps. Finally, I wish to add that in these Shahnamis, we see one defining feature of Ilkhanate imperial style, which is the horizontal format of the pieces. This derives from the Chinese tradition to the east. But the most important miniature pieces are without a doubt those to be found in the manuscripts of the Jami al-Tawarikh, the history of the world written by Rashid al-Din during the early 14th century. Now this Rashid al-Din was one of the central cultural figures of the Ilkhanid period in Iran. He was one of the chief ministers of Khazan Khan and Khazan Khan's successor, Uljaitu, who ruled over the empire between 1304 and 1316. It was this Uljaitu who ordered Rashid al-Din, who at the same time was a prolific writer, to create a history of the world, which would become the Jami al-Tawarikh. These were to be produced in luxurious manuscripts full of miniature paintings. And for this purpose, a special workshop was created, the so-called Rab'i Rashidi, in the suburbs of Tabriz. Here were assembled by Rashid al-Din, the most prolific calligraphers and the most talented painters of the empire and they were to produce two manuscripts each year, one in the Persian language and the other in Arabic. Sadly, only a few fragments of these manuscripts remain, but enough has survived to give us an idea about the style of these miniature paintings. And these pieces are considered as the first peak and mature stage of the Ilkhanid imperial style. Let us take a look at this example. It depicts the Buddha offering fruit to the devil. First of all, we clearly see here the horizontal format, which was typical of Ilkhanid miniature paintings. Another feature is how the hills and the trees circle around the bodies of the characters, thus accentuating their movements. Also to be noted is the creamy color palette of green, orange, blue and red. Also typical of this period is a low quantity of humans depicted and how these figures are pushed onto the foreground in large size. This is to put all our attention onto the central episodes, whereas later miniature paintings would become far more complex with many more figures. Other features, which are more unique to the Jami al-Tawarikh itself, are the slim bodies of the characters and their proportionately small heads. When Uljaitu died in 1316, he was succeeded by his son Abu Said, who was only a minor at that time. Several ambitious factions within Iran took advantage of the fact that there was only a child on the throne, and they started to fight each other for more power. Thus, a period of chaos ensued within the Ilkhanate. This meant that during the early years of Abu Said's reign, there was little time and money for more luxurious manuscripts. In 1327, a now mature Abu Said took effective control over Iran and ended the factionalism which had torn the country apart. And with the help of his vizier, Qiyat al-Din, the son of Rashid al-Din, the cultural policy 
of Khazan Khan and Ujaitu was continued. During this last stage of the Ilkhanid Golden Period, many more manuscripts with beautiful miniature paintings were created. It is believed that the illustrious so-called Demot Shahnameh dates from the last years of Abu Said's reign. Now the Demot Shahnameh is named after the Belgian art dealer Georges Demot, who purchased the manuscript in the early 20th century and subsequently cut it up in order to sell the miniature painting separately. In any case, in this manuscript, we see some typical Ilkhanid features return, such as a creamy subdued palette, or the fact that the trees, vegetation and hills accentuated the movements of the characters. Also typically Mongol is the horizontal format of the pictures, but there are also some notable differences with the earlier discussed Jami al-Tabarikh. The background, for example, is much more lavishly decorated. Also, the figures are more muscular and the facial features are much more refined than those of the Jami al tabarikh Some art historians have noted the preponderance of melancholic and gloomy scenes and have interpreted this as a reflection of the pessimism regarding the fate of the Ilkhanid Empire, whose collapse was imminent at that time. And indeed, after the death of Abu Said in 1335, the Ilkhanate disintegrated and was replaced by a series of smaller principalities. The unity of Iran was restored by the end of the 14th century by Timur Lenk. Despite its political downfall, the cultural heritage of the Ilkhanate lasted and would form the basis of later Timurid miniature painting, which in its turn would be the basis of later Safavid miniature painting. Thus, the exquisite pieces created in Iran during the Mongol rule became ingrained in the cultural DNA of Persia.